I'm live now. <laughs> hey guys, it's Rebecca. I'm talking to my friend. As you see, like I've got a pretty kick-ass view this morning. If you want to just, we'll pan around a little bit so you can see. We're, we're doing a little, um, it's not a staycation for us, but it's a quick little trip with some friends. So the kids are all here. And uh, so happy Monday morning, everybody. I don't know if you guys, um, as you're coming on, of course, say good morning. I don't know if you guys have a view quite as good as this today, but I'm feeling pretty pretty awesome about it, to be honest. So um, it's Rebecca Undum. You're watching Rebecca Undum Live. It's the weekly Facebook show where we talk about one simple topic. Hey, Ricka Brandon's watching. She's live with me. Who knew? She's right there. I can see her. But she's, she's tuning in as a visitor, which is really funny. Hey, Nikki. Good morning. So um, we're wrapping up today. So our theme for July has been all about freedom. And we've talked about a lot of topics. And I think this has been a really fun month. Um, I've gotten a lot of feedback from a lot of you about these topics, like freeing yourself from um, the need for approval and freeing yourself from um, what should have been. And those are just a couple of the things that we've talked about. Today, we are talking about um, freeing yourself from the need to be needed. And uh, it's so much fun. Hey, good morning, Annie. Gosh, I miss you. Um, would love to see you again, buddy, sometime soon. Uh, Rick and I stayed up, you know, too late, like we're too old, like midnight is too late for us. I don't know if you guys can relate to that, <laughs> but we stayed up until about midnight and we were talking and we actually talked a little bit about this. Um, so where this idea of uh, where we may be addicted to helping, I'm gonna call it a addicted to helping. For me, it plays out in a number of ways in my life, okay? It, it plays out, for, and again, this is just for me, this isn't, gonna, this isn't gonna ring true for all of you, but I think that, um, a lot more women suffer from this than we probably realize, and I really don't think we're talking about it much. So, okay, we got Jesse on. Hey, good morning, Jesse. And Carly, I, she also misses you, Annie. <laughs> so yeah, Annie, you're just like widely missed by all the people. <laughs> okay, so I think that women suffer from this. I think it's a common thing. Um, I, I, I'm gonna just straight, straight out say it. I think some of it for me comes from um, the way that I was raised that I had grandmas that, uh, two grandmothers, well, three, technically I had another set of grandparents. That's a whole story for another time. But all three of them were like the consummate caregivers and nurturers, and they took care of everything on the home front. So I grew up seeing that, right? Like seeing that, that that's the example. Then I think also there's a lot of societal pressure that women handle the stuff on the home front. Like that's her job, that's her role. And I'm not, I'm not even saying that there's not some validity to that perhaps, but then this is sometimes what results is that we become addicted to helping. Okay, so we got Jack. Hey, Jack, good morning. It does, isn't it just amazing? I'm sitting on one of their like deck chair or dock chairs, you know? Oh, it's, it's gonna be a beautiful day. So it's pretty, I'm pretty stoked to be here. So we got Sherry on, good morning, Sherry. Um, okay, so this idea of being addicted to helping, I think for me, it play, has played out in several places. It plays out um, with my spouse for sure. Um, I'm better than him at all the stuff, so why not just do it myself instead of, um, you know, asking him or expecting him to step up and do things. So we're gonna get to like, there's kind of three things that you might know you're, you're addicted to helping. And this is, okay, so actually there's kind of a, a train that happens. You love to help, you do all the helping. Uh, the helping becomes enabling, and the enabling can eventually turn into actually having a savior complex, which is a, it's a bad thing. Like psychologically, it's a bad thing. Nobody wins, okay? Helping, it comes from love. Enabling comes from fear. Savior complex turns into control. Okay? So you can see it's just kind of a downward uh, spiral. And it's not, it's not healthy and it's not good. So with my spouse, certainly I enable. Um, with my children, I enable. And what happens is, um, I, like, so I, we've talked about this before. Um, I, it was actually a blog post I wrote a few months ago. Um, just like, if we never expect our kids to take care of their stuff, to self-manage, to do things for themselves, then they won't. Like we get exactly what we tolerate. And this is why I think it's so important because it's so easy to slip into this spot where we're, um, we're frustrated with everybody in our lives, but we're partly to blame. So here are kind of the three things that are indicators of this. And then we're gonna talk about like, what do you do and how do you get back on track? So the first is that we consistently put their needs ahead of our own. And that sounds crazy, but it's like, let me do this for you. Let me help you. You know, somebody comes to you with a problem and you're like, oh, I'm going to fix it for you. And you get this idea that you can do everything for other people, right? The second thing is that you think nobody can handle anything better than you can. It's totally my thing. Totally my problem. 
probably even more than number one because I feel like I balance self-care okay realistically but I I absolutely believe that I'm like smarter and better at these th these things than my husband when it comes to like stuff at home this happens at work too um, if you think about hiring people and enabling them and just not empowering them to figure it out for themselves um, I know I work with a lot of gals that have like teams people that are on teams with them and instead of teaching them showing them and getting the hell out of the way we continue to hover and we continue to do it for them so they never learn how to stand on their own two feet right um, and then the third is if at all the same time like while you're putting their needs ahead of your own and you think you're better than them but all at the same time you're pissed you're just continually pissed off because they're not doing it or not doing it right that you might be an enabler if that's how if any of those three things resonate with you um, and I would love, like, if you guys could give me, like, a little hands up emoji, like, oh my gosh, like, raise your hand, sisters, if this is something you struggle with, because I know that I do. Um, I wish that I didn't. And uh, I'm going to put these things into practice. And Rick and I talked about, we talked about a few of these strategies last night, actually. Um, but there's kind of five specific things that I think we can do to move through this so that we get beyond um, the control. I mean, really, take back, give back the responsibility. And instead of um, thinking about this from a place of like fear and control, it really comes back to a place of love and recognizing that helping other people stand on their own two feet is far more loving and compassionate than doing it for them. Okay, so Jesse said, I always say I wanna, I wanna do things so they get done and they get done right. Oh, sister, me too. <laughs> but that's part of the problem. And this, again, I'm not saying it's a problem for you, Jesse, but it's a problem for me. Um, the idea of like, yeah, I'm just, I'm helping, right? And like Jack said, I love helping. Um, so if we're addicted to it, <laughs> that's, that's when it becomes a serious problem. Because the bottom line is like, we can't, we know in our hearts, like logically that we can't fix other people, but this does nothing to even help them. When you, uh, when we get the hell out of our own way and allow people ownership over the tasks that we need their help with, like we give them ownership and we empower them, um, that helps not only us because the task gets done, but it gives them that sense of empowerment. Like this is really important with kids. Um, we aren't raising children to do things for them for the rest of their lives, right? We are raising children so they can be self-sufficient, capable, and um, hopefully solidly contributing members of society, right? That's the goal. And so if, if those things ring true with you, um, you know, that you like to do things all yourself because you think you're the only one that gets it done. Or like Jack said, if you just love, love, love helping, really, really think about this and really think about how much it could potentially be hurting, okay? And again, this is helping that turns into enabling, that turns into I'm gonna save the world because I'm so good at helping, okay? Um, this isn't just your average servant heart kind of stuff. This is when it becomes a little toxic for you, okay? All right, flow, thumbs up from flow. So that must mean that this speaks to you. All right, so here's the ideas. Got five like thoughts about this. The first is to give it back. Return the responsibility to the person with whom it belongs, okay? So again, this is where like at home on the home front, my husband and I actually have to talk about it. And he has to have areas of responsibility. And right now he doesn't. It's like everything is just mine. And then if I have to ask him for help, which is kind of bullshit if you think about it, right? I shouldn't have to ask him for help. It should be like, we're in this together. And, I, you know, and I have to clearly say like, hey, can you know, how, how can you take this over? Can this be your thing? And then if something comes up and he can't do it because he's farming or he's gone, then he's maybe has to ask me to take his job on for a while. That's fine. But having clear areas of responsibility is really important. Okay, so that's number one. Give it, return it back. So Rika said, a friend asked me once how I knew my way was right. And I was like, it's obvious. <laughs> it's obvious because I'm right. But it's led to a new perspective. Yeah, which is, which is awesome. Good point, Rika. <laughs> I just yelled at her from here because why not, right? She's live, but she's also like physically live right there. I can see her from where I sit. Okay, so giving it back and being clear about what those areas of responsibility are. The children thing. If your kids forget their shit at home and they need it for school, then you know what? This leads into number two. We have to allow the natural consequences, whether positive or negative, to happen. Because there are consequences, right? You don't remember your stuff for school, then you either, I don't know, what I don't know, it depends on what it is you forgot. If you forgot your gym shoes, that means you don't get to go to gym. 
uh, if you forgot your, um, your textbook for something, that means your teacher's going to be pissed at you. We have to get step, step off, especially as parents, as moms. This is so, I, I told you guys a while back, um, I am not the mom that runs stuff back to the school. And I'm not saying like, oh, look at me. But it's because seriously, I, I harangue on my boys especially to get all their stuff and to make sure they have everything they need. And inevitably, they forget stuff all the time. But if I'm constantly swooping in and saving the day, what am I teaching them? So the second thing is allow the natural consequences to happen. Let it happen and be okay with it. So that's number three is release the need to control the outcome. That's really hard for me. Because, okay, let's be real, if, if it's about parenting, when my kids screw up, I sometimes am embarrassed that it's a reflection on me as a mom. That's a super crappy thing to have to say out loud, but sometimes we got to just talk about it, right? I go, oh my God, it makes me look like I don't have my shit together. But you know what? It isn't about you. It isn't about me. It's about them. If, they, if we want them to learn how to be like to be able to manage their stuff, like backpack management was a big deal with my, my, uh, my younger son. Cause he went to kindergarten this last year. He never got a handle on backpack management guys, like ever. He never figured this out. And I was so damn frustrated all the time, but it is not something that I can do for him. He has got to learn it himself. And so, yeah, can I create maybe a visual schedule? Can I create, um, a list reminder with like visual cues on it for him to help him remember what goes in his backpack or a, yeah, all, we can create all these little aids all we want. That's absolutely helping, but it doesn't help to, to swoop in and save them when they fail to do their own stuff, right? Okay, so Jack said, I did this last year when my son forgot a piece of a project at home. You did what, Jack? You have to tell me what you did. Do you mean that you you fixed it for him or you let him just like fail? Not fail, but have the natural consequences. I want to know what you did if it was that you just kind of let it lie because that's really hard to do, isn't it? Because again, it mostly comes back to what we think it says about us. It's not about us. It's about them. Okay, so number four, make a plan. Set new boundaries. And again, this kind of goes back to what I was saying like with my spouse to say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what you're going to do. And these are our things. And then number five is to follow through. So don't, don't take it back. Like if, if you create the boundaries, you create that structure and you say, these are your things. These are my things. Don't fall into the trap of being like, he's not doing his things. I need to swoop in and save him. I'm the only one that can do it. So I'm going to fix it. It doesn't fix it. All you're doing is taking back the things that you've agreed. And again, you've got to agree to it, right? Oh, okay. Awesome, Jack. So you, the school called and you were like, hmm, too bad. Oh, here comes little sister Just pounding down the dock. You're going to come and say hi. Say hi. Can you say good morning? <laughs> okay. I love that, Jack. You were like, oh, well, you, you were supposed to bring it and you forgot it. Right. And all I can say <clears throat> about all this is it's really, really hard because again, I think from the very start, it goes against what we believe we're supposed to do as women, as caregivers, as nurturers, as helpers. And yet ultimately, if we really want to help the people we care about in our lives, like really, we want to help them, our kids, our spouses, our friends. If you have friends that are constantly coming to you because you're the fixer, you really have to reevaluate that because people can find their own solutions and we need to help people learn how to be problem solvers. Our children, our husbands, our friends, like our, our employees, right? The people in our lives, we have to help them learn how to help themselves. That's the best kind of helping that we can possibly do, right? Okay, Annie, you said, I don't pack for my husband when we travel. I often get looks like I'm the worst wife ever. When it comes up, he looks at you like, all oh, the other wives do it. I don't help my husband pack. My mom does. So there again, you guys, like we kind of have to also recognize the patterns we've been shown and then just say, does this really fit for me? Because I don't want to freaking pack for my husband. I love that you shared that, Annie. Yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> he goes, hashtag commando. Sorry, honey, you forgot your underwear. Your problem. Okay. And Jack said it affected his grade a little too. Ooh, so tough. God, good job, mom. Good job. Because that's, that, that's what I'm talking about though. Like if we let the consequences land where they're supposed to land, like there's a natural consequence, they, how are, how else are they going to learn it? If we just constantly fix it for them, then they learn like nothing, right? I don't have to do anything. I don't have to follow through. I don't have, to, I don't have to make sure I have all my shit for school. Cause mom's going to just save me. How is that helping? 
And, and the biggest thing here, you guys, like big, big picture, not only is it not serving those people, but it doesn't serve us. Because we walk around being pissed off, frustrated, right? Because we're doing everything and nobody cares. This is what Rick and I talked about. She's, she's the friend that I, I can look at her and be like, this is how I feel. And I'm super, I, you know, I feel taken advantage of. And, I, and she's like, you're letting yourself be taken advantage of. And, you know, I, this tough love usually, ha it's like I need the lesson and that's why this comes up, right? That's how this always works, right? We learn, the lesson keeps coming around until it teaches us what we need to know. It's in my email this week too, by the way, um, lessons. They keep coming back around until you figure it out for real. <clears throat> but that's the thing. We walk around, we're pissed off, we're angry, and we feel like nobody's helping us as we do all the helping. What if we just stopped helping? What if we just waved the white flag and we said, okay, enough. I can't do it all. I'm not supposed to do it all. This isn't, this isn't who we were designed to be. So today I just encourage you to think about, think about this. Really think about er any area or relationship in your life. Because the whole thing is if we, if we can learn to let go of this, this need to control by helping, we can learn to stay in uh, close and in a relationship with ourselves in the context of being in relationship with other people. So we don't lose ourselves. This is how we lose ourselves in our roles, whether it's the mom, the wife, the business owner, our relationships. Um, mother, like as a, as, or as a daughter or a, <clears throat> a son, if you've got a parent that really needs you, that happens as our parents get older, that shit changes and it changes everything. And suddenly you're taking on a completely different role. The only way to not lose yourself is to keep this in check and recognize when we're doing everything for people instead of letting them help themselves. Okay, so that's what I've got for you today. I hope that you guys found this helpful. And also like, if you know women that need to hear this, of course, as always, please share the video and it'll be available on replay like it always is. And I think some of the best conversations about the Facebook Lives happen in the Group Seekers community. So I'll post the link that there, you guys feel free to join that. Um, but I've loved this whole topic this month, the whole theme this month about freedom. Because really, that, that is one of my top three values as a human being is freedom. Uh, being free to do what I want with whom I want when I want. It's a really important thing. And there's nothing more freeing than learning how to let go of a lot of this stuff that we've been talking about for the month. So if you, if you like today's, you should really go back and check out the ones from the past uh, four week or four Mondays. Because they're really, there's some good nuggets in there for everybody. Um, next month, we're talking about ch -ch changes. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about change because it's August and August for me always feels like renewal. Like kids go back to school. Moms finally get to think about themselves again. So we're going to talk about, a, it's like a four step process. We're going to cover one of the four steps every single Monday throughout the month of August about how to make changes that stick. It's an actual process. And the great thing is processes mean that once you learn it, it can be, actually become habitual. So if you've tried something before and sucked at it, um, or it's like this thing you keep trying to get and you keep trying to change and it doesn't change and you can't get it right and you get frustrated. Seriously, tune in for the whole month of August. We're going to be talking about how to, how to change that so that your changes actually stick. Okay. So that has, <laughs> that is what we've got today. Oh, Brittany hit an angry face. <laughs> That's hilarious. She's trying to participate, but I'm, I am, I'm going to leave now and I'm going to enjoy the crap out of the lake. Thank you, Annie. And uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic Monday. As always, friends, thank you so much for joining me live. And uh, until we meet again, ladies, ladies, groove on. Okay, love you guys.